Hi, everybody. My name is Bridget Marty, and I am the Senior Associate Director and Career Coach in the Carlson Business Career Center. Thank you for joining me in our next video installment, which is focused on preparing for the interview. If you're watching this video as part of our green light series, you'll know that and remember that the entire series is devoted to helping you feel confident and competent as you head towards applying and interviewing. So if, after we've done all that work, thinking about your personal brand, applying that to resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn, your networking sessions, you finally land that call for an interview. So this is the next step in terms of preparing as we've gotten all the way to this spot in our checklist of how to be interview ready. So um, hang in there. We're going to go through a couple of tips. Now, when I talk about being interview ready, I'm putting it under the context of either a recruiter, like a screening call, which can be just that initial 15 minute conversation, or it could be a longer interview. Common question we get is a student will secure an interview or they're not for certain if it's an interview because they'll say, I think it's 15 minutes. Is that a screener or is that an interview? And best practice, treat it like an interview. Um, prepare as you would for an interview. It is not uncommon for that 15 minute call to go to be 45 minutes or you have a wonderful rapport with the person that you're speaking with. And essentially it is an interview um, or possibly they just mislabeled what it was and it was really an interview all along. So for the sake of this section um, and just best practices, when you have that screening call or an interview, do everything you can to um, cross your T's and dot your I's so that you feel prepared and confident and competent. One of the first pieces that we want you to do when you are going to have a call or an interview is make sure you're researching the company. As you can see on the screen, we encourage you to lean into some of the um, generative AI tools available. So for example, you could use like a chat GPT or a Gemini tool, and you could um, conduct some research such as the prompt we have listed, what are the five biggest challenges and opportunities faking night? <laughs> facing Nike. And you can see here on the screen, um, we have the prompt, then we have some of those challenges and those opportunities. As we know, AI is never meant to replace your own AI, which is your brain. But this can be a great way to help you just start thinking about the organization and start to build out that research. In addition, you can do more research in the organization regarding headquarters, what are recent news articles um, about the organization, what are their major lines of business, um, are they merging into new markets. Um, as smart cookies, we know you can leverage the resources at your disposal to learn more about the organization. I just can't under I can't overstate how important it is to have that research ready and on hand so that you can speak thoughtfully about the organization. Next is you're preparing for that conversation with a recruiter or a hiring manager. Um, in part of that, re the um, company research or just learning more about the role and what to expect, um, check for those connections in your network. If you have been doing that proactive networking, and let's say this is a company that you've been very interested in, you've had conversations yeah. with a few folks there, um, why not reach out to them and say, I'm really excited to share. I received a screening or a networking call. Uh, or sorry, a screening or an interview call. And um, I'd love to tap back into some of that networking we did earlier so that I can learn more about how you might think an interview goes in this organization or any tips that you might have. Um, some of those connections can prove to be very helpful in getting a sense of maybe what's exceptionally important right now or something that's trending with like the company's strategic plan. So um, people love to be useful and helpful and offer a little bit of insight. So check your network. Um, in addition, as you're preparing and um, and kind of getting in that mind space, one of the most challenging questions our candidates face is the question of what are your salary expectations? And to clarify, this could show up in an application um, as you're just submitting your application or your resume cover letter. Um, it can also be on that quick phone call. It could be part of the interview. Um, never quite sure, but I know this is one of those questions that really can throw folks off, um, off kilter a bit. Most importantly, before you go into that call, if you can look to see if the um, salary range is posted on the position description. And if not, leverage some of the tools I've listed here on the screen 
also want to admit these tools change. Um, companies buy these tools and they change names. And um, But looking at a couple of these different tools to help you get a sense of what the range is can be very helpful. Um, but you want to have a broad data set. So we also say if this role is something that is reflective of a graduate business role, as in it requires some years of experience plus an advanced degree, um, then it's likely going to align to what we see of the data that is published in our employment report. As a reminder, that employment report data is from you all. Um, our students report um, offers, and so the titles, company names, re the benefits, the base pay, any kind of bonuses, signing bonuses, um, they share that information. We're able to aggregate that anonymously, and then we can publish that so that our candidates have a better sense of what the market is paying for different roles. So for example, if you're applying to a role and it says they're looking for a candidate with five years of experience and an advanced degree, um, then they're likely going to be higher paying at the graduate level, which is going to be and is going to be described in our employment reports. Um, if the role doesn't require an advanced degree, and maybe it's only requiring like a, just one or two years of experience, it's likely more of an entry level role. And in this case, our employment reports at the graduate level might not be the best benchmarking tool. You might want to um, snag the undergraduate employment reports as well. Again, the goal is to get a broad set of data so that you can tackle this question with confidence and offer a range that is reflective of what you're seeing through your research. We're always happy to help with this. Um, most importantly though, I just wanna make sure it's part of your prep. So a couple of things to be prepared for as you head into that conversation. Next, making sure that you're using the wonderful resources that we have available on our website. Um, including example videos. Um, we also have the interview question database, which is fully developed and run and maintained by students. Um, folks that have come before you have generously listed out types of interview questions that they have been asked before. Um, and those are things to just kind of help you um, get a sense of what that company might be focused on. Um, and you're always welcome to add to that database as well. And so that's a nice place to, to start, get a few questions that um, we know our candidates have been asked in the past. When it comes to the actual preparation, so you know, you're prepared for salary questions, you've done your company research, you have a sense of some of the questions, we go right back to those best practices of any kind of interview prep. Tell me about yourself. Why are you interested in this company? Why are you interested in this role specifically? Will they ask you those questions exactly like that? Not necessarily. However, you want to have your tell me about yourself, that two minute career story, because that's highlighting your brand. And you might be casually including that in part of the conversation you're having. Why you're interested in the company and why the role, those are good just reflection questions for yourself. Um, and there is a high likelihood that they're going to ask why you're interested in this um, opportunity. Next, reviewing the position description to identify what those key skills are that they're looking for or knowledge bases or experiences. So then you can jot down and say, okay, according to what I'm seeing here, they're looking for skills in project management, data analysis, um, uh, persuading others, working cross-functionally, and have someone who has experience in global work environments. Um, then you want to make sure you are building out the appropriate star stories or your interview stories that are part of another video so that you will be able to speak to the skills that they're looking for. That's where we get to that concept of transferable skills. You might not have the exact experience that they're looking for, but if you can demonstrate the ability to complete the type of skill or task they're looking for, that's gonna build confidence in you as um, the right candidate for the role. This is also where you can leverage generative AI to help you in analyzing a position description to identify what would be the most likely questions that could be asked. Now, again, this doesn't mean this is the employer's using this as well, and these are the questions they're going to ask. However, um, this is a way to get, just start to think about, okay, what might be some likely questions based on the position description? You see the chat, the, the prompt here on the left side, um, which is, you know, generate a list of the 10 most likely questions I'll face based on the description and you're um, putting in the position description along with your resume, and then um, you'll get an answer. Again, this is not based in fact. We don't know that the company is going to ask 
these questions exactly. However, this is typically rooted in what are the core skills and competencies that are coming through in that position description. And if you're in an interview situation where you're interviewing candidates for a role, you're likely going to ask questions of them based on the skills and competencies that you're looking to hire for. Okay. So as you've gathered the information, company research, um, tell me about yourself, why this company, why this role, and drafted out your star stories, then we have to practice. This is the piece that candidates can easily drag their feet on, and I get it. This is one of those times where I say you have to act your way into thinking and don't think your way into acting. You kind of just have to jump into some practice. We often think when we're telling a story in our head, if I'm mentally walking through a star story, it sounds great until I start to speak it out loud in an interview setting where different parts of my brain are taking over. Maybe my neck starts to sweat. I get a little anxious. My mouth gets dry. Um, we don't want to be um, relying on our instincts in that moment because um, our different parts parts of our stressors, or our stress syndromes are coming out. Instead, we really want to rely on those neural pathways we're building through those stories. And so that we know we've got these stories kind of um, rooted in our minds already. And so then when it comes to telling it, it's just like an old, it's a choreography, it's a song. It's something that you can just say from the heart. You absolutely remember it. Like me and remembering pretty much every lyric to some kind of 90s salt and pepper song. Like, I don't know how I still remember them, but I do. So one of the things you can do is leverage a great piece of software we have, which is interview prep. It's found on our website. When you log in with your U of M email address, it will ask, would you like to prepare for an interview? Do you want to conduct a, a virtual interview, like a practice one? Um, do you want to re record them and look back at past ones? And then, so this is like, hey, I want to practice. So you can see there's different types of interviews that you can practice for. Um, you can also create, here's the my interview I want to build. Like, here's the 10 questions that I want um, the AI tool to ask me. It will prompt the question, it'll time you, you'll get to do your answer through your webcam, it records it, it gives you some feedback. In addition, you have coaches at your disposal to help you along the way. So feel free to schedule a mock interview session with a coach. That means it's a 45 minute um, coaching session where a typical mock interview is the coach you're working with is going to go through your tell me about yourself, why this role, why this company, and then um, build a couple of questions based on the positions and description that you're providing for the role. We want to emulate what an interview is going to look like as much as possible while also providing you with some actionable feedback in the moment or at the end of that experience. Action items for you. Bookmark those resources on our website. So essentially just keep bookmarking our website. But we know that interview question database and interview prep are two really um, popular resources. And they're the ones we get questions about to say, where is that link again? And then um, download our interview preparation packet from the shared drive. That's for our green light candidates, but also it's on our website um, as well. And those are wonderful tools you have at your disposal. Thank you. And we were going to see you at our next video.